this is a design that was uh, posted on Plasma Spider. And it's a very nice design. It's called Twisted Vine. I don't know if it was drawn or if it was a combination of an original design that was modified or whatnot. But uh, as I look at the design and I figure, okay, uh, let's take a look at the dimensions of this here. Uh, let's go midpoint here to midpoint here. And this sign is 37 inches wide, okay? And he made the comment that this entire piece here is cut with one pierce point. So the torch pierces once and it goes around this entire design and cuts it out one pierce point. Okay, well that's nice. But I see some problems with this sign that are going to crop up after he cuts it. And I'm going to show you what those are. Uh, now, he may disagree, and it may not be a problem, but it would be bothersome for me. Let's take this dimension here. I'll just go from here, let's see, from here to here. Okay, now that's a 17-inch wide piece of metal, okay? Remember the number 17 inches, because if I put a break down here, at this point here and here you can see that this little one inch wide tab of metal this is going to be metal the metal is going to come up here and it's going to support this entire piece of metal here so what's going to happen is this sign is going to hang in the wind uh, i assume it's going to be made out of 14 gauge 16 gauge material or whatever but what's going to happen is the wind is going to hit this giant paddle right here, and it's going to push it, uh, push it and pull it back and forth. And it's going to bend back and forth at this point, and eventually that metal is going to fatigue, and the entire center of this sign is going to break out. If I were to um, put a... Put a break in here just to show you temporarily what I'll do is I'll draw it like this and just cut it out and join that you can see that that entire single piece of metal has no other connecting points except this little one inch tab right here at the bottom where it comes through from the rest of the sign. So you've got metal down here, that's fine. And you've got metal coming up here, and when this is all joined together, this is dropouts, the leaves and the birds and whatnot. Okay, that's all dropouts. But you have an area here that's only one inch wide. Not even one inch wide, it's close enough. One inch of metal, and it's holding up this entire design right here in the center of the sign and i see that as a problem uh, in strong winds i see this thing paddling back and forth like a stop sign on a, on a on a pole and eventually fatiguing and bending and breaking off right here um there's other areas of the sign that are the same way uh what needs to happen is up here somewhere uh where it's discreet and not quite so visible I think what I would do is I would go from node to node here, maybe, and connect that line, and then we offset it by 0.25, like so, extend it up, and trim it out. and join it and what you have then now is you have metal coming up here supporting this entire section of this sign and it's also connected at the top by this joint right here and that means that's not gonna gonna paddle back and forth in the wind okay now if this was a really wide section here I'd also put a support on this on either side here to keep it from rotating 
in the center because we now have a center axis. We have a line going from here to here. And what would happen then is if the, if the wind is blowing on this side here and all of this metal that's over here, you see, whoop, all of this metal over here, it might push on this side and, and, and not quite as hard on this side. And this thing's going to rotate. Um, you know, it, it, it'll be uh, going in, to the back and then be being pulled forward and back and forward again. And the same thing on the other side. Again, because there are only two anchor points. But certainly with only one anchor point, I'll go back and, and erase that. With only one anchor point, this sign here is going to fail at this point, at some point in time, because all of that metal right there is being supported by a tab that is one inch wide. And there's just no way that that's going to last a long time. It's going to fail. It's going to fail. Because the wind's going to... Unless he's making this thing out of half-inch plate or something. Okay, if, if it's made out of half-inch plate or, or even quarter-inch plate, maybe this little tab here would be enough to support that uh, as a freestanding piece of metal. But if it's made out of 14 or 16 gauge, the wind itself, just from pounds per square inch against the metal is going to bend this thing back and forth and this is a failure point for that sign right there okay let me join that again here's another one over here is this piece you can see this very narrow here you have your solid metal and the metal comes up and it comes up into this area and supports these curved finger type things here off to the side as a freestanding unit. If I put a break at the node here and the node here and the node he here, okay, you can see that this whole section here is supported by this very narrow piece of metal right here. And that's the bend point where all of this up here is going to attempt to bend in and out and bend back and forth and you've got a little tab of metal right here holding that in place. The same thing over here on this side, you can see all of that metal. Let me move up here again. All of this metal here is being held in place by a tiny little strip of metal that basically goes from here to here. Okay. And that's another point, and also on the other side over here, it's the same thing. If I were to put a, a break right here at this, at this uh, entry point here, you have this section of metal that's being held by that tab, and this whole section of metal right here being held by a tiny little tab right down here at the bottom, right there. So this is another place in this sign where it's going to be prone to failure. Uh, depending on the material that's used and how thick the metal is and where it is. If it's hanging inside, if this is hanging inside, it's not going to be a problem at all. But we all know what the forces of wind and, and everything else do when they start blowing on a sign that's hanging outside. So I would give serious consideration to just a slight little redesign of this. It's a very nicely done sign. I love the design. Um, but there's too much metal that is... Uh, not being supported, not being supported by, by other parts of the sign. And it's just too prone to failure. This right here, if this were to wiggle back and forth in the wind, it would very soon fail right here at this point. Because that's where, that's where the metal, you know, you take a piece of metal and you bend it back and forth and uh, it fatigues and it will eventually break. And that joint right there is what's holding this piece of metal in that sign. And that's just not enough. So there should be a connection up here somewhere, and I don't know how he would do it. I don't know if he would curl this over somehow and have it come down and back into the metal at the top, or uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's not my design, but I certainly would not design it uh, with these large pieces of metal here and over here and this big one in the center here,
relying on one little tab of metal to hold it all in place because it's just not going to work over time. Um, give some consideration to coming up with another contact point. I know it means a couple more pierces on the metal, but the pierces are not the problem. Uh, the problem is the finished design, you don't want it self-destructing in strong winds. And I see at least three points in this sign where the sign would self-destruct uh, over a period of time simply because there isn't enough substance to hold what this would weigh and, and the wind that's pushing against this. How many square inches is this? If this is um, 18 square inches and uh, let's see, we'll call it uh, 12. Okay, 12 by 18 is, uh, and I'm tired, so I'm going to pull up my little calculator here. 12 times 18 is 216 square inches of metal that the wind is pushing against. Now, it, now it's true that there are cutouts here, and the wind will go through where the birds are and where the flowers are and whatnot. But it's essentially, you have that much square metal that the wind is pushing against with this little one-inch strip of metal right there holding it all in and that's not going to work it's going to fail right there after a period of time so it, it at least at the very least needs some kind of a connection up at the top to prevent the wind from fatiguing this area of the sign likewise these two large curvatures here and here are relying on this very small piece of metal right across here to hold that into place. And it's not going to do that. That's going to fatigue and break as well. So it's a beautiful sign for an indoor location. If it's outdoors, it needs some tabs to hold that metal into place so that the metal doesn't just bend back and forth slightly in little micro bends as the wind is blowing and then suddenly fail and have the whole center of this sign fall out or these pieces over here and here fall out of the sign because there isn't enough support at the bottom to hold them in there as always i offer free online training uh hooking our computers together via Zoom, or I can come out to your location and do one-on-one -on -one training for a daily fee for designing your software and also running your table. Send your name, address, and phone number along with description of your table and your software and what you're doing with your table to the address below, now at mail.com, and I'll get back with you and we'll see about getting you some training to avoid uh, mistakes like this. It is a beautiful sign, it's very well done, um, but it is prone to failure if it's hung outside. That's my opinion, your mileage may vary. I hope you've enjoyed this video.